Richard Holdner here. Let's talk Turbo LS. You're building your first Turbo LS project and you want to know what's the best cylinder head to use on my turbo combination. Should I use a 706, an 862, a 241, a 799, a 243, or the much maligned 317? The reality is you're asking the wrong question. You should be asking what turbo should I use? The cylinder head question will take care of itself. What's the best cylinder head for your Turbo LS? Definitely 706 all the way. That's a little sissy head, man. You don't even know. Low compression turbo, they go together. 317 all the way. Man, you guys don't know what you're talking about. Everyone knows the best cylinder head choice is a 799 or 243. Bro, you don't even know what you're talking about. 706, small chamber, more compression, more horsepower per pound of boost. 706, yeah. 706 head, man. You don't even know what you're talking about. That thing doesn't even flow. Get a 317, lots of flow, big valve, big ports, turbo stuff all the way. Now, why pick the 706 or the 317? You can have all the flow and all the compression. Pick a 243 or a 799. Dude, what are you talking about, man? Why don't you mind your own business? Holden already tested it. 706 versus 317 versus anything else. Guys making a million horsepower there to 700 pounds boost. Definitely the way to go. 706. Yeah. I don't even know why you'd want to run a 706. 317. Max flow. Big valves. Big ports. Big power. Turbo. Let's face it, when GM made performance heads, they didn't pick a 706, they didn't pick a 317, they picked a 243 or a 799. They know what they're doing, that's the best head. We can let those guys argue all that they want. The reality is, the very best factory cylinder head for your turbo application is the cylinder head that you already have. That's right, despite the fact that we've done a ton of testing, you can make a thousand horsepower with any factory cylinder head. I can close my eyes, pick a set of cylinder heads, put them on my LS, Add a thousand horsepower turbo, and guess what? It's going to make a thousand horsepower. Let's take a look at a couple examples. To illustrate how not important choosing the right cylinder head is for your Turbo LS, I'm going to show you what happens when we make huge mistakes and put together what might be the worst possible combination that I've ever come up with, but yet it still can make the right amount of power. Instead of looking at what cylinder head do I need for my Turbo LS, you should not be asking that question because what cylinder head you use is actually not nearly as important as the first question. The first question that you should ask is, how much power do I want to make? Let's say you want to make a thousand horsepower. So your first consideration should not be cylinder heads. It should actually not be camshaft either. Your first consideration in that question should be what turbo should I use? If you want to make a thousand horsepower, you need to select a thousand horsepower turbo. Seems fairly simple. You need an S475 or an S480 or a 7875 Gen 2 from VS Racing. There are lots of different turbos that are sized to make a thousand horsepower. So once you have your thousand horsepower turbo, that's how much you're going to make. Now, if you want to pick the turbo or the motor that you're going to use to make that thousand horsepower, you can do that with a 4.8, a 5.3, a 6.0, a 6.2. It really doesn't matter. If you have a thousand horsepower turbo, all of those combinations will end up making a thousand horsepower. It'll be a little easier to get there with the bigger motor, but even the little 4.8 can also make a thousand horsepower. It just takes more boost to get it there. And notice that we haven't even talked about cylinder heads again, because that's really not that important. You can put any cylinder head on any LS and with your thousand horsepower turbo, you can make a thousand horsepower. I want to show you an illustration of how badly <laughs> I made a mistake. Well, this was done purposely, but I want to show you how bad this combination was and show you that we can still get to a thousand horsepower no matter how badly you screw the combination up. So this is a, an example. We had a 4.8 liter, which all right off the bat is already kind of the smallest LS that you're going to put together. So you're limiting yourself there, but this was a 4.8 with a factory set of 706 heads, a factory truck intake, and we had a small camshaft in this thing. And that's really all you need. You need a cam and springs. This was a, a BTR stage two turbo cam. So we had a 4.8 with a turbo cam in it. We're gonna run a turbo. It's gonna work well, but really you could put any camshaft in this. So this combination made 407 horsepower and 363 foot-pounds of torque. But here's what I did to like, 
totally mess up this combination. We still had our 4.8, and what I did was put a set of 317 heads on it, low compression, so the 4.8 and low compression, not a good combination. I also put a short runner intake manifold on it. In this case, it was a race sniper intake. And then I also removed the Brian Tooley Racing Stage 2 turbo cam and put a Stage 2 blower cam, a positive displacement blower cam, which has a wide LSA, which also kills low speed power. So all of that combination is definitely going in the wrong direction. I have a full video up on this, but I'm just using this one as an example. So here's what our, here's how bad we did. <laughs> yeah, let me get the right one here. So the red now <laughs> is how badly I messed up the NA power output. So basically I took a ton of power away everywhere. So I had a short runner intake, not good. I lowered the compression with the 317 head and I put the wrong camshaft in it. So all of that conspired to make my combination much less effective. So the other thing I did to totally throw this combination in the wrong direction is I put an oversized turbo on it. We put a billet wheel S480, which was way more turbo than we needed to make the power output that we were doing. But here's what happened when we added about 11 pounds of boost to our uh, unsatisfactory combination. And we're still up at, up, getting up near 650 horsepower. But the point is, everything was wrong about it. The, the 4.8 was fine, but the camshaft was wrong, the cylinder heads are wrong, the intake manifold was wrong, and the turbo was not sized. But yet still, if we wanted to turn the boost up on this thing, we could still make a thousand horsepower with this. Now, it wouldn't be as good as the other combination, so we can take a look at that. So here's what happened when we added boost to our other combination. Now with, with the truck manifold and the right camshaft and the 706 head instead of the 317 head, we basically made more power everywhere under boost. And we also had a, sm a slightly smaller S475 turbo on there. So that turbo was more responsive. So everything about that combination was better. Yet, even with the wrong combination and the wrong cylinder head in the case of the 317, we could still make all of the power that we wanted to make. Now again, there are better choices for things. We could put the right intake manifold on there and the right uh, camshaft, obviously. And even the right cylinder head, a 706 head is going to be a little bit more responsive than a 317. But a 317 will still work as well a 243 or a 241 or anything else. So no matter what head you put on there, you can still make the power that you want based on the turbo. Here's another example of a cylinder head comparison on a turbo application. This one is a video that I already have up and people use it as reference all the time, but I think that they're using it incorrectly. Now we know, here's a comparison, this is a 5.3 liter, it's a single turbo application. I'll show you the NA stuff first and then we'll show you what happened when we ran this thing under boost. It was a junkyard 5.3 with a comp uh, 454.0. Dash 11 camshaft. It was a 227, 243 at 50, 613, 623, and 113 degree LSA. We had 120 pound injectors, a, a um, Holly HP management system, an LS6 intake, and a stock throttle body. And when we ran this thing NA, we ran it with both the 317 heads and the 706 heads. And here's the power output on the 317 heads. It made 448 horsepower and 398 foot-pounds. And here's what happened after we replaced it with the, the 317 heads with the 706 heads. We made a bit more power, so higher compression, and we're not at the flow limit of either one of the heads. So 467 horsepower and 412 foot-pounds of torque. So right off the bat, everyone says, okay, 706 had definitely the way to go compared to the 317 head. And here's what happened when we ran the two under boost. So here is our 317 head, and here is our 706 head. Both of these were run at the same boost level. This was uh, seven and a half to eight pounds or so for both of the combinations. As we see, the 706 head made more power NA, and it also made more power under boost. But I was regulating this test. I wanted both the combinations to run at the same boost level. But there's nothing saying that you have to do that. So if you have a combination, either a 4.8 or a 5.3 or a 6.0 that has 317 heads, just the fact that the other head made more power because it has more compression doesn't mean you have to run them at the same boost level. You can have that 317 head and just turn the boost up. As a matter of fact, an argument can be made 
if you were running these on pump gas, either 91 like we have in California or 93 like they have elsewhere, if you were limited the limiting these combinations with octane based on pump gas, you might be able to make more power with the lower compression, higher flowing 317 hit because you can add more boost and or timing compared to the higher compression version with the 317 hit. You could certainly make as much power, you just have to turn the boost up or the timing up just a little bit to equal the power output of the higher compression. What I'm saying is, if you have 317 heads on your combination, they're going to work just fine. In fact, they might work even a little bit better on pump gas. But if you have a thousand horsepower turbo, either one of these cylinder heads will allow you to make a thousand horsepower. If you have a set of 799s on this combination, you can make a thousand horsepower. If you have a set of 241s, you can make a thousand horsepower. Stop worrying about the little bit of power difference like we see here running at a specific boost level. Just put your combination together, put boost in it, and go out and do some smoky burnouts. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, what do we learn besides the fact that Richard obviously likes to argue with himself? The one takeaway from all of this stuff, despite the fact that I've done lots of other tests indicating what is the best cylinder head to use on your turbo combination, the one thing you should take away from all of this, every cylinder head will work for your turbo combination. No matter what factory head you have, a 706, 862, 241, 243, 799, 317, it doesn't matter what number your cylinder head has on your combination, it will work. Just like every camshaft is a turbo cam, every factory cylinder head is a turbo cylinder head. That's right, it will work. Stop nitpicking the little bit of extra flow or different valve size or different chamber size you might get from some other cylinder head. Put your combination together. Pick a turbo that will supply the amount of power you wanna make with your combination. Put a good intercooler on it, put the right injectors and fuel pump. Go out and tune the thing and enjoy it, because it's gonna work. I'm Richard Holder, guys. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff, and I will keep testing.